show. I am your host, Jay Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the black community by promoting business ownership. If you are currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, We invite you to join us every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 300. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and we have another outstanding show in store for you, family. Today's show topic is how to create your dream position. Don't wait to be validated. How to create your dream position. Don't wait to be validated. Before we get to today's episode, I just want to share a few things with the BEB family. First and foremost, I want to welcome all first time listeners to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family. Now, please stick around until the end of today's broadcast, and I'm going to share all of my social media contact information and all of my resource links, including the link to my new book, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses, and also two of my platforms to help circulate dollars in the black community, which are BeSmartByBlack.com and Hire Black Freelancers. And last, guys, and definitely not least, I want to thank the BEB family from the bottom of my heart. This is episode number 300, which is kind of crazy because when I started this thing, I never knew what it was going to turn into. And over these five plus years, I've been so blessed to be able to meet and work with the BEB family from all over the world. And you guys don't realize what this is for me. This is this is my passion. This is my assignment. This is what I was put here to do, to share my experiences with my people and try to help elevate them to entrepreneurial success. So when I always talk about pinpoint and monetize your genius, I'm living in that genius right now, the intersection between my passion and my talent. And once again, I, I want to thank you guys. 300 episodes is a, lo- a long run, guys. It's a long run. So every week for 300 weeks in a row, You got some new heat from your boy, Jay Jones. And the only way I would commit to something like this is because that I truly love what I do. So I pray that everybody out there finds that genius space and is able to work in that genius space. But once again, I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart, um, just sharing with me and making the friendships and relationships that I've had with a lot of the BEB family members along the way. I love you guys. And We're going to keep rocking and rolling as long as we can. So let's get ready for today's episode. All right, let's get into today's episode. Once again, titled How to Create Your Dream Position. Don't wait to be validated. How to Create Your Dream Position or Situation. Don't wait to be validated. So we can interchange position with situation. It doesn't really matter. Now, let's talk about what the definition of validation is. So validation is defined as the action of making or declaring something legally or officially acceptable. Once again, the action of making or declaring something legally or officially acceptable. Now, when we talk about validation, when it comes to the workforce or in general, normally somebody else is validating you. So when you go for a job interview and you sit down across the desk from somebody, basically They have the power to validate you or not. So they determine if you're worthy enough to work in that organization and earn a paycheck. So they validate you. What we need to start doing, family, is validating ourselves and understanding the value that we have. So most times we're, we're always preconditioned to go in and let other people validate us. So once again, if you're trying out for a a sports team, in AAU, high school, middle school, or whatever. People are validating you. Are you good enough to be able to start? Are you good enough to make the team? 
So this is something that is pre-programmed in us, letting other people validate us. What we need to start doing is validating ourselves, And we're going to talk about five questions you need to ask yourself and three steps you can take to move forward. Okay, so let me first uh, start by giving you a few examples. And today's show is not going to be too long, family, because we got a whole bunch of stuff I got to take care of. And the new book is about to come out pretty shortly. But I just want to talk to you about how important it is to have that mental mindset of being able to validate yourself. So there were many things that I wanted to do as a as an adult in terms of working and being an entrepreneur. So a lot of times people will have these ideas, but they're never able to get to that position because they've never been validated. And I'm just going to give you three things or three situations that happened in my life and how I validated myself. So the first thing was um, I used to sell advertising newspaper magazines and uh, all types of digital advertising but years ago I wanted to publish my own magazine and at the time I was in advertising sales and I just didn't want to sell but I knew that the that the publication wasn't going to allow me to actually be the uh, to publish my own or be the publisher so what did I do I went out and I created my own magazine it's called the self-employment guide. It was called the self-employment guide. This was years ago before the internet really started rocking. And what that publication was, was it was about entrepreneurship, how to start businesses, business opportunities, business ideas, franchise information. So it was called the self-employment guide. So I didn't wait for somebody at Gannett, which is one of the largest newspaper publishers uh, in the country back then, USA Today, and a lot of Uh, regional papers that they own I didn't wait for them to try to go up or push me up the totem pole to become a publisher because I knew it wasn't going to happen now Gannett within that organization had different magazines and those were some of the things that I was really interested in because I always liked niche magazines and so I said you know what that's what I want to do but I started thinking about it and I knew based on my trajectory as an employee at the company That was never going to happen. So what do I do? I go out there, see you later, and I start my own. Okay, so I validated myself, and the magazine was very successful. Another instance was I wanted to be on the radio and not just listen to the radio because I always had a lot to say. I'm a a teacher by nature, not a traditional teacher, but just a teacher by nature. And I know people have always asked me, hey, man, how do you do this? How do you do that? And so I always wanted to be on the radio, not just listen to the radio. So what did I do? I started out at a small AM station in Philadelphia. And the first show I had was called The Entrepreneur Advantage. Okay, The Entrepreneur Advantage. The station was predominantly white station. So I knew I couldn't come out with black entrepreneur blueprint. So it was The Entrepreneur Advantage. And I did that for close to a year. And uh, I also went over to another station and uh, I left there and went over to another station and did that for a couple of months. And then the light bulb went off because podcasting was really getting hot. So I said, you know what? This is crazy because, you know, the one station I was at, I was on at eight o'clock at night on an AM station. And if you you guys know anything about telecommunications and radio stations, what happens is you have to pot your signal down. Uh, at the AM station at night, pot your signal down means turn your signal down. So basically me on the radio at 8 p.m., I think it was 8 or 9 p.m. on the Tuesday night on an AM station, it was akin to me opening up the window and talking out the window. That's how far the signal went pretty much. So if I drove like three or four miles past the, uh, the, the radio station, I would have trouble getting the signal at that time at night. So I'm saying, saying, man, this is a waste of time. And so I started looking into podcasting. And when I looked into podcasting, I'm like, you know what? I can talk to people all over the world. And the people at the station were like, man, you know, this podcasting and internet radio is not going to be anything, blah, 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 blah. Now, remember, this was 2014. So it hasn't podcasting and internet radio hasn't, you know, wasn't even close to what it is now. So. I started doing that and I said, nah, guys, I'm rolling and I'm going to focus on who I want to talk to 
which are black entrepreneurs. So that's how Black Entrepreneur Blueprint came about from the entrepreneur advantage, where I had to be generic based on the radio stations I was on versus, you know, being specific or niche going to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. So I didn't let anybody validate me. I wanted to be on the radio. What do I need to do to be on the radio? Oh, I got to pay $300 a month or whatever it is. Because I was paying for that space at first. Okay. And then the second radio station picked me up. But they weren't really paying me much of anything. So I validated myself. Nobody had to come and hire me to get on the radio. I put myself on the radio. All right. Next, I always love marketing. Right. So I'm a student of marketing. So I'm the type of cat that would watch QVC and infomercials years ago because it's a science. And, and it, it, it intrigued me how people thought about marketing and how people became successful in marketing. So one of the things that really intrigued me about marketing was you used to see people all the time with these crazy gadgets or ideas. And then you see the 800 numbers people will call up and they'd be selling stuff. And I'm like, yo, they just really sold a bunch of junk just by demonstrating what it did. So you, those of you guys who are old enough to remember a company called Ronco, and the guy's name I think was Ron Popeil, P-O-P-E-I-L, I think that was his name. But years ago, he used to have all types of infomercials on, cooking uh, products like ovens and stuff like that, but his company was called Ronco, and he made goo gobs of money, multi-million dollars in money putting these cheesy infomercials on. And so that was one of the first things that got me in the market. I'm like, yo, this this stuff looks like garbage, but dude is on here all the time paying for the airtime, so he must be making money. So I wanted to become a marketing director, and nobody was going to hire me for that. I didn't have any skills, even though I was good at it and in advertising. But then when I started my mortgage company, I told my partner, I said, yo, let me handle the marketing and the operations. Now, I did sales, too, because we both... When we started, it was just me and him and a thermal fax machine. So we all were doing sales. But my primary or additional focuses were on operations and marketing the business because I truly enjoyed marketing. So those are three personal instances where I decided, hey, I'm not going to wait to be validated. And these are the same things, guys, that you need to do. Don't let anybody show you a va- or, or give you your worth. Because they're never going to show you the worth that you really are worth. So it's a whole, it's a game, especially in corporate America. It's a game. Okay. Once again, they're going to hire you out for whatever your salary is valued at. And, but you better believe me, you're going to put in more work than what you're getting out in salary. All right. It's an arbitrage. Okay. It's just like if you're a contract tech person. So my brother-in-law is a contract tech guy down in the DC area. So they bill him out for $190 an hour and he may get $80, $70. I don't know what he makes, but you know how that works. So when somebody is validating or has the power to validate you, that means that you're not working or you're not leveraging your full potential for yourself. And it doesn't matter what type of position you want to create. So, and I I say this all the time and not to, to denigrate any positions, but If you were a a janitor, right, say you work in a school or whatever you clean, you know, you work in an office building. If somebody is paying you guys, that means you have a skill or a talent that is worthy of being paid. Nobody's going to pay you for nothing, right? You're not just going to wake up and say, oh, yeah, somebody's paying me. Now, unless you create that yourself, which is called passive income. That's what you want to do. But if you're not in that position yet. You're not going to wake up and you're not just going to get a check from the school board because you're a custodian at, uh, at, you know, that you're not a custodian at the school, but you're just not going to get a check from anybody because you woke up. But if you work as a custodian in a school district, that means you have talents and skills. So why not apply those talents and skills to your own business? Why not start a cleaning business, commercial, residential, whatever you want to do? So you can take any skill that somebody's paying for for you right now and parlay that for your own business. If you're in telemarketing, if you're in inside sales, that is a skill. You know, I know back in the day they got the telemarketing laws now, but 
telemarketing is a crazy business. And so telemarketers, quote unquote, were a dime a dozen back then. But if you can get on the phone and sell a product or service for somebody else, what do you think you could do on your own? So if you're in inside sales right now, and this is, this is funny, guys, I just want to digress a second. If you want to find business opportunities or ways to make money, go to uh, websites like Indeed.com or Monster.com and look at some of the positions, right? And I used to do this all the time. So I would type in inside sales and then I would look at the ads, the jobs. Wow, what are they selling? Can I sell that? Can I create a team to sell that? So what you need to understand is if you're an inside salesperson or telemarketer, whatever you want to call it, why don't you start telemarketing and selling something for your own self? As opposed to once again, being leveraged by a company. And today we're talking about how to create your dream position or situation. Don't wait to be validated. And once again, just to reinforce this, validation is the action of making or declaring something legally or officially acceptable. And when you get validated by somebody else, that means they have the power. When you validate your damn self, <laughs> that means you have the power. And that's what it's all about. It's about leveraging what you have, the resources that you have. And so we're going to talk about uh, a few questions that you need to ask yourself and then some of the steps you can take to actually create your dream position. So question number one, what situation do you want to be in? What does what is your sister? What is it? What situation do you want to be in? I wanted to be a publisher of a magazine. That's what I wanted way back in the day. And I knew based on my trajectory at the company, because the publisher position, those cats didn't leave. You had people in the publisher position for 20, 30 years, as long as they could stay there. OK, so I knew that that wasn't going to happen at the company that I was in. It wasn't going to happen pretty much at any company because I didn't even have publisher uh, experience. OK, but what I did know was that that position wasn't that hard. I said, I can figure this out. So what situation do you want to be in? I wanted to be a publisher. So guess what? I created my own magazine and I validated myself. Guess what? You the publisher, Jay Jones publisher, bam, validated. All right. So that's the first question. What situation do you want to be in? Question two, what does it look like? All right. We always talk about where we want to be, but what does that position look like? What does it entail? So for my magazine as a publisher, when I started, obviously, it was just me. So I was the chief, the cook and the bottle washer. So, yes, I'm quote unquote the publisher, but I hadn't built up the infrastructure to be able to focus just on that position. And see, that's what happens a lot of times when you transition from employee to entrepreneur. Many times we know how to do a job, but we don't know how to create the structure around it for yourself to put yourself in that position. So meaning that if I was hired as a sales rep, all right, just, and we'll take this at the uh, Gannett newspaper, the advertising company that I worked in, the media company, they told me, Hey, this is the scope of your job. This is what you do. We have your manager in place. We have production in place. We have everything in place. All you do, Jay, is go out, talk to customers and sell advertising. So that was a singular focus for the most part. Now, when I created my own magazine, I had to sell, I had to handle the production, I had to do everything, okay? So you have to understand, number question two, what does it look like, all right? What situation do you want to be in is number one, and number two, what does it look like, okay? Question number three, how can you create that situation? How can you create it? So I wanted to be a publisher, so guess what? I had to publish something, right? It could have been a magazine. It could have been a newspaper, whatever it is. That's what I wanted to do because the way I think guys is, all right, why can't I do that? This is what they're paying me. And I know I'm underpaid from the jump. I know that based on my talents and my skill set. So why aren't I going out there and creating the situation that I want? How can I create this situation? All right. And so that's what you have to think about. So, for example, if you are a, uh, a and I'll use this uh, CPA tax time, right? We got the extension, which is cool if you need that 
say you're a CPA or an accountant and you, you, you like doing taxes, but you want to be the boss. You want to own your own CPA firm, accounting firm. How can you create that situation? Number one, you got to format, you know, formulate the, the whole thing in your head. But the situation is really broken down by, OK, this is what I want this to look like. How am I going to get there? All right. And we're going to talk about that. In number four. So number one is what situation do you want to be in? And these are five questions. Number two, what does it look like? And number three, how can you create the situation? Question four, you need to ask yourself, what tools and resources will it require? What tools and resources will it require to create your dream position or create your dream situation? I'm going to give you another true life example of one of my businesses. And I've mentioned this on the air probably about three or four times. So if you heard the story before, just, <laughs> just don't mind me. Just 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 hang in there with me. All right. So years ago, when I started my um, I had an ADT security system company. I was an alarm dealer. And so before I started that dealership, um, I signed up to become a dealer. I had to have an office space. I had to you know, have computers to run credit and all that type of stuff. So while I was working in corporate America, what I did was I created a list of the tools and resources that I needed to open this business. OK, so I knew I needed an office. They required a physical office. <coughs> Excuse me. So they required a physical office. I had to get an office. All right. That was number one. Number two, I needed um, desk, telephones, computers. I needed the tools to do the business. All right. Number uh, three or four or five, whatever number we are now, I needed employees. And so it was a lot of money for me at the time to get all this. So your rent, you got to pay first month, last month and a month security. So that was three months rent. I had about 12 desks. I, I wanted to have 12 people. I had 12 desks. I had 12 computers. I had phones. I had phone system. I had it all. Now, I didn't have the money to buy all of that up front. So what I did was I gave myself about a six month plan. So every time I got paid from my job, I would take money and I would buy this week. I'm going to buy a couple of desks. Next week, I'm going to buy a couple of phones. So over that six month period, in my basement, I had accumulated all the tools and resources that I needed to open up my business. So then I went and this is all why my application for a dealership was going through. So then I went, I found an office location, signed the office lease. It was about to think it was a three year lease. And that's real scary when you first starting out, right? Three year lease. And what happened was the day I opened up. I had newspaper ads running uh, for sales reps that Sunday. I was opening up Monday. Monday morning, I get into the office about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Phone is ringing already. Started interviewing people for sales reps positions and, 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 uh, and uh, assistant positions. And so when I came in that first day, everything was ready. But it didn't happen overnight. I had planned it. So question four, what tools and resources will it require? So maybe you're not ready to open or, or move to that position right now. But what do you need to do to get that situated? So when you are ready to turn that key, it's ready to go for you. All right. So that's question number four. Number one, what situation do you want to be in? Number two, what does it look like? Number three, how can you create the situation? Number four, what tools and resources will it require? And number five, when will it be accomplished? What date? So goals without dates are, are wishes. I think that's the, that's the uh, phrase people use. So you need to have a date. Put a hard date on it. I want to do this by this date. And then what you want to do is you want to work backwards. All right. So if it's this eight week plan, week number one, I need to have this accomplished. Week number two, I need to have this accomplished. Week number three, I need this accomplished. So when will this be accomplished? What date? And so you got to put down a hard date so you'll get things done. And it's funny because human nature, I talk about that all the time. Human nature is a mother. If you don't understand human nature, the way people think, work and motor or, and act, 
it's going to be very hard for you to be a successful entrepreneur. You need to understand yourself. So a lot of people procrastinate, right? They wait till the last minute because they don't feel like doing something. And this happens to me too sometimes in certain things. But when will this be accomplished? What date? Hold yourself accountable. So these are the questions. And today, guys, we're talking about how to create your dream position or situation and don't wait to be validated. Now, before we get into our last third of the show, I just want to share all of my contact information and resource links. All right. So once again, my new book is out, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. So if you're looking to build successful, sustainable e-commerce business, go to a newblackwallstreet.com a newblackwallstreet.com pick yourself up the physical edition of 1495 plus shipping and handling or the digital version for 995 now i also have a flagship e-commerce course that is compatible with a new black wall street just go to educatedecommerce.com educatedecommerce.com but what i will tell you my new program is on it's, it's educated e-commerce on steroids. Okay, it's called BBAelite.com, Brand Builder Academy Elite.com. Just go to BBAelite.com. I have a promo that's still going on because people are still hurting financially with this coronavirus. It's only $97, guys. Uh, it's only $97. So just go and use the promo code BBAelite100. BBA Elite 100 is the code. So normally it's 397. I bought that down to 197. And now with the coronavirus, I had so many people reaching out to me that are in a tough situation that needed help in starting their e-commerce business. Just go to BBAelite.com. Use the code once you start signing up. BBA Elite 100. And it's only $97. And I'm going to do that for the next five people that register. All right. Also, I'd mentioned at the top of the show, this is all about building an economic power base in the black community. So I've created two platforms to help us do that. Be smart by That's a site where any black product producer can upload their, their products and connect with black consumers worldwide. So it's free to upload your product information. Be smart by Make sure you check it out and support that. Also, for any freelancers, if you do anything like Fiverr.com or Freelancer.com, make sure you go to HireBlackFreelancers.com. Upload your information. Once again, it is free. So if you want to connect with black consumers and black businesses that want to hire black freelancers, this is it. H-I-R-E BlackFreelancers.com. Also, if you want to request me once this coronavirus thing is over to come out and speak to your church, organization, college, school, or for my book talk, go to bookjjones.com, bookjjones.com. Now, if you need to connect with me individually, and I know this is a lot of stuff, but I'm going to give you one catch-all site that you can get all of this information. Now, if you need to connect with me via email, anything long, hit me at jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. That's J-A-Y, J-O-N-E-S at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Facebook, Go to Facebook, type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Twitter, hit me at jjones001, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S-001. Instagram, jjones for real, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S, the number four, R-E-A-L. YouTube, please go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, family. Go to YouTube, type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, hit that subscribe button. I have additional content that comes out on YouTube that is not on the show. Now, yes, the show does come out on YouTube, but there's additional content. So I have a new series that's going to be coming out actually next week. And I'll tell you guys about it next week. But it's going to be a short video series. And basically, it's going to be like how-to videos for entrepreneurs. Okay. Also, if you want to be on the BEB text line to be included for notifications and special reminders about events, text BEB. To 555-888. B-E-B to 555-888. LinkedIn. Check me out. Go to LinkedIn. J. Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Connect with me there. Now, I said a mouthful, right? And I expect, I, I know you guys, I don't expect you to write all of this stuff down. So everything I just talked about is on BEBConnect.com. 
bebconnect.com. It's like Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, connect.com, BEB Connect. All of the resource links, all of my contact information. You can go there and listen to the last episode. You'll see all of the resource links about the free trainings and everything else that's going on. And don't forget, bbaelite.com, only $97 right now. Use the code coupon code BBAELITE100. Now, let's get back to the final third of the show. Okay, how to create your dream positional situation. Don't wait to be validated. So we had just gone over some questions you need to ask yourself. What situation do you want to be in? What does it look like? How you can create that situation? What tools and resources will it require? And when will it be accomplished? What's the date? The next thing is I want to give you three steps to help you get to that point. Okay. Now, the first step may sound like it's a little... uh, (laughs) incongruent doesn't necessarily go with this but it does and i'll explain it. number one read at least one book a month that will help you get closer to your dream situation or position okay and i want to talk to you guys about the importance of reading so if you and i know times have changed now people read on kindles and ipads and stuff like that but something my dad always told me this is years ago he said you can tell a lot about a person based on their bookshelf okay And I probably had what one, two, three, four. I got about five bookshelves. I'm a voracious reader. I love to read. Okay. But read at least one book per month that will help you get closer to your dream situation. So they say, um, whatever you put in, garbage in is garbage out, right? Good stuff in means good stuff out. So take the time to educate yourself. And I say this every week, damn near, but it's true. If you're not going forward, you're going backwards. There's no such thing as standing still. So you need to continue to educate yourself in your profession, your, um, you know, your dreams, whatever your dreams are, and you need to start reading. Okay, there's tons and tons of information out there. And once again, the world is at your fingertip. You can even get free books. All right. So there's all types of ways and all types of resources for you to use to help you get from point A to point B. So I try to read at least one book a month. Okay. Now, they don't have to be 600 page books. And I'm not necessarily talking about, (coughs) excuse me, no fantasy books. (laughs) I'm talking about books that are going to help you get to where you want to be professionally and as an entrepreneur. All right. So number one, read at least one book per month that will help you to get closer to your dream situation. Okay. now, if you're like me, a lot of times I read two books at the same time. And that's just I don't know why I've always done that, but I read two books at the same time. Number two, um, learn as much as you can about the position or the situation you want to create. Okay, so talk to people that are currently in that position or situation and do some research. Okay, so if you want to create, if you're uh, an accountant and you want to build your own CPA firm, your accounting firm, reach out to somebody that's already doing it. Okay, and what you'll find out and you'll probably be surprised when you ask people for help. A lot of times they'll help you. Hey, Jay, you know what? I need some help, man. Do you mind helping me with this? Not a problem. Most people are amicable to helping people, right? Even if you're in the same industry. (laughs) Because the first thing they're thinking about is, well, you're just talking about this. You're not going to do nothing anyway. Because most people just talk about it instead of do it and put the action in and follow through. Okay. So what you want to do, number two, learn as much as you can about the position you want to create. Talk to people that are currently in that position and do research. So when I wanted to become an alarm dealer, and I told this story on this uh, show before several times. So bear with me if you heard it. So I was sitting in, I was doing it part time. I was selling it part uh, alarms at night, part time uh, side hustle money. So I had my regular job and then I would do this at night. And I think at the time I was selling advertising and I had the side hustle. So every alarm that I sold, which I was giving away at the time, uh, front door, back door, motion sensor, and uh, yeah, two, yeah, front door, back door, motion sensor, keypad, and I think two keypads, whatever. Free installation. It was free. It was twenty nine dollars a month, thirty six month contract, and I would make a hundred and fifty dollars. And I'm like, damn, I'm not even collecting money up front. I'm giving the system away. And I'm making one hundred and fifty dollars. I'm like, well, how are they? You know, how does this work? And so 
<coughs> excuse me, when it comes to learn as much as you can about the position that you want to create, talk to people in the position and do research. So I was in my uh, manager's office one evening and he had to take a call uh, in another room. So I'm sitting there in the office looking through the magazines. And what I saw was it was a magazine called SDM Magazine, Security, Distribution and Marketing. And it was a trade magazine. So I pulled the magazine. I started looking at it. I go to the back of the magazine where, you know, you have your uh, help wanted ads and all your classified ads. And I'm, I'm browsing through there. And it says alarm financing, you know, make 30 to 32 times whatever your monthly, I'm paraphrasing, whatever your monthly contract is. So if I'm selling an alarm for $30 a month, just say $29.95, $30 a month, what the financing company will do, they would pay me 32 times that. So it would be $300 or $960. So I'm like, oh, I see how they can pay me $125, $150. So I'm saying to myself, well, damn, I'm selling this thing, making a buck, 25, buck 50. And they're making at least 960. And what I learned later was they were making a lot more than that. So what I did was I slipped that magazine in my briefcase, right? <laughs> and I borrowed it. But one of the ways that you can do research is look at the trade publications in your industry. Now, most of them obviously now are online. So if you're in a specific industry and you want to try to find out something, go to the trade publications. It has a ton of information. I had no idea about financing. So what happens is when with that those uh, contracts I was signing, 36 month, $30 a month contract, they would actually sell that to a finance company. Now, those contracts are only 36 months long. They would pay me. 32 times meaning they got four extra months and after that i didn't get paid so as long as they stayed on there for 32 plus months that financing company was going to make that recurring monthly revenue rmr recurring monthly income and so you know we had credit checks and all of that stuff but you got to learn as much about the position that you want to create or the situation you want to create and start talking to people and eventually when i got right before i got in the business I went and I interviewed with other alarm companies just to try to pick some information from them. And I ended up being friends with a, a guy that owned a, a large alarm company, multi-million dollar guy. And he eventually he wanted to buy me out. But I didn't sell myself out that way uh, at first. I, I sold it later on. But he actually taught me a lot in the business. So number two, learn as much as you can about the position you want to create. Talk to the people that are in that position. They have experience and also do your research. And number three, formulate your plan for transition into that position. So whatever your plan is for transition. So my plan, once again, when I was starting my first alarm, my alarm business, you know, I had to get all my equipment, everything in order. It took me about six months and I had to piece it together because I didn't have all the money at one time. So formulate your plan for transition into the position, not just the physical transition, but the mental transition. What is it going to take to be successful in that position, in that situation? How do people in that position or situation operate? What are some of the key performance indicators for that position or situation? So you have to be prepared mentally and financially for whatever you're doing and maybe even physically. So if you're creating a physical position, say you're doing carpet cleaning or something like that, you got to be prepared that way. So formulate your plan for a uh, transition into that position. And today what we've been talking about, guys, is how to create your dream position. Don't wait to be validated. And just to, to, to basically reinforce this, guys, you're talented. You have skills. You have marketable skills. You have skills that people will pay you for. So like I said, I don't care if somebody is paying you for something. That means you have a valuable skill or talent. Because they're not going to pay you just because you they like you. <laughs> they're going to pay you for a skill or talent that you possess. So why not take that skill or talent that you personally possess and leverage that and create your dream position or your dream situation? Don't wait for somebody to validate you. Like I said, I didn't wait for somebody to make me the publisher of my magazine. All right? I didn't wait for somebody to, to make me a radio host. OK, I did that myself. I didn't wait for somebody to make me a marketing director because it probably never would have happened. 
You have to create those positions, okay? Create those opportunities, create those situations. So wherever you are right now and you're not in the position or situation you want to be in, you need to start thinking about creating that position or situation, okay? Because if you don't do it, chances are you're not going to get validated. And let's, let's be real, family. Why are you going to give somebody else the power when all the power is in you? The power is in you. You're letting somebody else tell you what you're worth. That's what, and I've done it before, trust me, so I'm not, I'm not talking bad about nobody, but you sitting across the desk from somebody that's going to validate you. They putting a stamp on your head, either yes or no. Yes, you're qualified or we deem you qualified. We validate you that your skills are good enough to get a paycheck from us. And guess what? We're still going to underpay you. You know, that's the game. Or you can say, guess what? You don't need to validate me because I'm going I'm going to go and get mine. I'm going to create my situation or the position I need to be in because I believe in myself. I know my self-worth. I know my value. If you're paying me this, then I know I'm worth more than that. So the only way you're going to get overpaid in corporate America, if you're the, the son or the daughter or the boss or whatever, or, or a family member, the nepotism, where you really don't know what the hell you're doing, but you're still getting paid. And you see that a lot with small companies. They have some idiot that's the manager or something that doesn't know a damn thing about the business. But because they have got the right bloodline, they're in that position or situation. So stop waiting for people to validate you guys. Get out there and validate yourself. Where do you want to be? What does it look like? What is it going to take to create that situation? What are the tools and resources you need? And, and put a drop dead date on it. I'm going to be this or in this position by this, this point in time. You don't put a date on it. It doesn't mean anything. It's a wish. So we have to back up our thoughts by actions. Know-how and knowledge. I always talk about it. Know-how comes from doing. Knowledge can be acquired sitting on the couch watching television, right? Know-how is what makes money. I know how to do this. Or I have knowledge of this. So don't sleep on that. That's today's show, family. Make sure, uh, you know, uh, that you guys continue to check out Support Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, the podcast and the blog and all the resources. Uh, once again, episode 300. And when I started, I would have never imagined I'd be at episode 300, to be quite honest with you guys. Uh, didn't know how it was going to go. But once again, that's all because of you guys, the BEB family supporting, you know, the movement getting out there, supporting what we're trying to do, create this, this, this movement where we're getting this good word out there because there's nothing better than being self-reliant. And we have everything we need as a community, as a worldwide community. We have the smarts, we have the resources, we have the know-how. Problem is we just not focus it. But what we have to do on an individual basis, it starts with you, then you teach that to your immediate family. Then you teach that to your neighborhood. You teach that to your community. You teach it to your state, world, whatever. It starts with you. Every individual that's listening to this podcast, it starts with you. You're listening to this for a reason. You know, yeah, we all want to get paper. We all want to get that bag. Trust me, I know that. But it's deeper than that. Helping your brother, helping your sister out. Somebody that's behind you that needs your assistance, pulling them up, being a mentor for, for people that are a couple steps behind you. It's all about community. Guys, we were a communal people and colonialism jammed that up. And we're not even going to get into that because I can go on another five minute rant for that. But colonialism jammed that up. Had a conversation with my wife the other day. We were out walking and we did everything as a community. We hunted together. You know, we 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 ate together in terms of our crops, what we grew. It wasn't until colonialism came in and what they did was they created, they started breaking up the land. So now instead of the, the whole land for everybody, oh, Jay Jones got 20 acres over here. Somebody else got eight acres. Well, Jay Jones now can plant more crops and do that. So he's becoming more wealthier than the other guy that got eight acres and I got 20. And so what that did was... That broke that communal aspect of the way that we lived. 
And so land ownership was one of the biggest proponents that started the classes, the classism system. That's a whole nother lecture, a whole nother talk. Love you guys. I'll see you same time next week. Peace.